Well, welcome everyone uh, that hasn't, uh, uh, that either has, has was here last year or not here or is planning to come next year because you heard all the great things we've been doing. Uh, this is the summer 2022 informational briefing. Uh, we're going to go over uh, a wide range of activities. Um, we're going to go through some introductions, overview of the entire Alaska project for those of you that don't know what's going on. Uh, we also have a, an amazing video that we put together. Um, it's a little difficult to integrate into the Zoom and uh, it, it takes you about 12 minutes to, to watch it, but um, you want to watch it by yourself. Uh, with some, with plenty of Kleenex. Um, we'll go through the the commanders and the, the commanders. The, the, the commanders uh, what the week looks like, uh, any necessary skills, uh, survey, and then any questions that anybody has. So, with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Mark Jaraki, the president of the ninety eight fund. Thanks, Scotty. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, associated with what we're doing. It's an honor to, to be the president of the fund. And I will tell you, for those that were here in Alaska last year, it's an honor to see what we've done in such a small period of time uh, to help families of our of our fallen. I'd like to take a quick second and, and introduce all the board members that are on the call that I know of. And if I, if I miss anyone, please, uh, please speak up. But our vice president, uh, Mr. Mark Weaver. Mark, you mind just uh, waving real quick to everyone? All right, thank you, sir. Our, our chairman of the board, uh, Mr. John Serafini. Our, uh, our final member of the executive committee is Mr. Jason Costell. Hey, everyone, thank you for joining tonight. And then uh, our other members of the board, uh, let's see, so I have uh, Tracy Volke. Hello, everybody. Hi, Tracy. I have uh, Bill Song. Hey everyone. Hey Bill. And then I have a, a round of observers that are that are new members of the board. And I'll start with Mr. Billy Gibbs. Hey everyone. And Mike Avey. Hello everyone. Good to see everyone here. And then Mr. Anderson Puckett. Okay. Hey, good evening, everybody. And Miss Stacy Tillman. All right, Stacy had some audio issues last time too. So uh, just to confirm, if there's anyone else a member of the board that I did not happen to see, if you could uh, introduce yourself real quick. And hearing none, uh, I don't know uh, if we have anyone from the 99 uh, Legacy Fund, but just a warning that when I get down to you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to jump on and, and say a little bit about, about the fund. Uh, so as you can see from the participants, we have a whole selection of classmates from 90, 90 great on here. And uh, I'd actually be remiss if I tried to, there's 50 some odd people on the call now, so I'd be remiss if I called on you. But I just wanna say that the, the, the overwhelming support from last year uh, is only uh, beaten by this year's uh, turnout. So thank you. Um, I had new names on here that they weren't able to make it, just, it's just making me smile. So it's wonderful to see you. It's wonderful to see your names. Uh, we have done something amazing since uh, last time we spoke to you. And so we had this call last year, getting ready for the summer of uh, 21. And we have since then uh, merged and brought with us the class of 99. And so they have their own uh, fund. It's called the 99 Legacy Fund. And uh, they are now formally part of our nonprofit umbrella so that we can broaden our, our spectrum of who we're supporting. And so uh, Haley Ulrich is the, uh, the president of that fund. And I'm not sure if, I, if, I, if she's on here, but if anyone from 99 is on, if you, if you could jump on and just give us a, a quick hello and then tell us about what you guys are doing. Hello, uh, my name is John Stillwell. I'm one of the board members for the 99 fund. Uh, right now, we're just we're trying to get our feet on the ground underneath us. Uh, we just officially sent out an email through the uh, the class email system, launching it, and I uh, had a pretty good uh, response to that. About doubled our fund, which really isn't a big number, but still, I'll take double any day. Uh, and uh, so, right now, we're we're looking to try and arrange uh, some visits to West Point because that's kind of what the uh, the, the surviving parents have said that their kids are kind of looking for as a way to kind of see what their parents have went through. So we're working with uh, classmate admissions and uh, trying to coordinate ways that we can get some of those older kids up there to 
to maybe go to a class with cadets and then maybe the younger kids, if we can just find a way to get up them to be able to go and stay with like one of our classmates that kind of have a little that sponsor experience and, uh, and just to kind of be able to see West Point to see where their, where their parents went. And then hopefully get some people up to Alaska to help you all out too, to get a feel for that as well. John, thank you very much. It was great seeing you in Army Navy and uh, what your class is doing uh, is, is awesome. And we're honored to be associated with you and have you, have you on board with us. Um, for those that don't know, I, we, I really appreciate the, oh, go ahead, sorry, John. I say I appreciate the mentorship. A a absolutely. Uh, for those that don't know, we're also in partnership discussions with the class of 10, uh, the class of one and the class of 04 for uh, merging together and joining forces to make this a broader spectrum uh, of coverage for, for those that need it. I'd like to pause now for a couple of special guests. Uh, th these are people that have really uh, changed our trajectory of what we're doing and how we're doing it. And uh, I'm going to first introduce Mr. Doc Joslin. Doc is the owner uh, of uh, Beans to Bullets. Uh, he's the podcast that many of you have heard that described our background, our history, and uh, kind of went very, very viral. And then um, he also is the president of the Alpine Remedy, Remedy Alpine, I'm sorry, which is another nonprofit that helps families of uh, our veterans in need. So, Doc, if I could turn it over to you for a second, and it's great to have you with us, brother. Yeah, thanks. Uh, first of all, it's uh, been an honor to be able to continue to to help the 98 Fund and and uh, the mission of this organization is incredible. Uh, yeah, so Bullets to Beans, I uh, appreciate everyone who was listening to uh, episode 36, where we got to spotlight the, the 98 Fund and uh, already designing um, at least one more episode, if not two, probably a precursor episode to the Alaska Project for this summer. And then uh, doing some stuff on site uh, during the Alaska project um, uh, this summer. And then, you know, Remedy Alpine, um, uh, my other passion project is all about getting uh, veterans and service members uh, into the backcountry for some uh, therapeutic recreation where we guide and uh, uh, outfit uh, at no charge to veterans really just to build on camaraderie and, and use the, the healing power of nature for uh, those that need it. Um, so uh, during the climbs uh, uh, up um, Gold Star Peak, uh, we'll have my team ready to assist, uh, who I'm sure will be introduced here shortly, uh, <laughs> uh, with uh, the Gold Star Peak climbs this summer. So I, I'm looking forward to it again, and thank you for allowing me to participate. Doc, thank you, and thank you for your coverage of our, the podcast and what you do for us. Um, we really appreciate it. And, and uh, you know, uh, folks, if you weren't there with us last year, uh, Doc Joslin was the lead medic that took uh, Jason Costell off the mountain with his broken leg. So, Doc, thanks for your service last year uh, medically also. We appreciate it. Never get a day off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then without without pause, I would like to jump right into uh, Gold Star Peak. The president uh, and founder of Gold Star Peak, Mr. Kirk Alkire, a uh, fellow Alaskan here with us, um, and actually just got off the mountain just a few minutes ago, uh, is, is with us. And Kirk, if you don't mind just talking about what you do, and uh, I want to say thank you for joining us and, and just for the amazing support over the last many years as we work together to support veterans. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Brock, and, and to the board and everyone else that's here tonight. Um, thank you. Um, Gold Star Peak started uh, in 2018. Uh, so, yeah, we've been at it for a while now, and um, we've put 1,200, over 1,200 Gold Stars and veterans on the summit of Gold Star Peak, which is right behind me in this picture. So, um, it's our mission, it's our passion and our mission to uh, bring veterans and survivors um together in nature to, to remember and honor the fallen and bring healing to all. And um, we couldn't do it um, alone. And so uh, doing it, partnering with the 98 Fund and, and helping you guys uh, is absolutely, uh, it's in our wheelhouse and it's, um, it's, it's ultimately our, it, part of our vision uh, of, uh, you know, doing our best to improve the well-being of military veterans and Gold Star families of service members who have given their lives in, in, in a time of war. Um, and, um, and, and not in war either, I should say, uh, via uh, supporting them um, through education and or advocacy that we, uh, we do locally and also nationally. 
um, it, we're honored to, to assist on this, on this, this mission with you guys. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'd be a little bit remiss if I, if I didn't just, uh, just say thanks. Um, today's climb and, and adventure for me was, uh, for my Lieutenant, uh, who died today, um, in 2007 on the 20th of January. Uh, he was a West Point, uh, cadet and, um, so um, there's a special place in my heart for, uh, for West Pointers, um, Academy graduates. And uh, so to, um, to my fallen Lieutenant, uh, First Lieutenant Jacob Noel Fritz, who uh, hails from Verndon, Nebraska. So to you and all of you, thank you. I'm an honor, it's an honor to be here tonight. Thank you. Eric, in honor of your lieutenant and uh, and former platoon leader, thank you for sharing that. And uh, here's to him. If you wouldn't mind joining me, if, if, if everyone wouldn't mind joining me real quick in a quick moment of silence for all of our fallen. Uh, we traditionally do that as part of our board meetings. It was not part of tonight's scheduled events, but uh, Kirk, you bring up a great reminder of why we do what we do. So if you would just join me in a quick moment of silence, please. Thank you very much for that. And uh, I, I would say that one of the things, if you've not seen our video this year, that Jason Costell talks about is uh, never letting uh, our fallen's name die a second time because we keep on speaking their names. So that's we're honored to do that, Kirk, and th thanks for, for bringing that up. Uh, I, I would like to quickly uh, say uh, a, a quick warm welcome to First Sergeant and Mrs. DeRocky. Uh, for those that don't know, in 2015, they were the ones that sponsored our trial run of the Alaska Fund or the Alaska Project, rather. And, uh, and participated wholeheartedly with everything we did with A.J. Volke when he came up here. So First Sergeant and Mrs. Duraki, I'm not sure if you want to say anything, but uh, I would like to say thank you for joining us, and we're honored to have you on here. <coughs> and, and as always, a quiet professional, good NCO in the background, so thank you, First Sergeant. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, I don't know if John Lamore has joined us, but John is one of my former soldiers that served uh, with me in the 101st. He is our architect that has designed uh, the, the future lodge. Uh, John, if you are on, please, uh, please let me know. But I don't think you've been able to join yet. At the Hi. same time, I would like to highlight another special guest, Miss Jess Savage. Uh, uh, Jess is the one that put together not only our, our video last year, the kind of the highlight reel and the quick uh, video we did, but then also the more lengthy one this year uh, that documents what we've done the last 12 months. So, Miss Jess, if you don't mind uh, introducing yourself, uh, we're very honored to have you here, ma'am. Hi. Wow, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, honestly, I'm happy to be here and I'm really excited uh, to be able to help out and I'm excited to see what happens this year. So thank you. Thank you. And then finally, uh, I mentioned earlier, but uh, sitting here to my right is my uh, is my mother-in-law, Linda Bushi. Uh, she was one of our many cooks that uh, just gave endless hours and support. Uh, so, Linda, uh, I know that Don is unable to join, unfortunately, uh, who's our other lead chef from last year. But thank you for your support. Thank you for what you do. And uh, both Don and Linda have tentatively uh, signed up for being on board again to cook for us this year. And I know that makes lots of people happy. But I'm not responsible for food. So, um, Jason Costell, you'll be fed okay. All right. Uh, with that said, I'd like to turn it over real quick to uh, Mr. John Serafini. Uh, he's going to say a few words about special guests and kind of the importance of the 99 Legacy Fund. John, it's all yours, sir. Hey, thanks, Rock. Uh, great to see everyone. Thank you so much for those who uh, are, are coming back after a very successful summer last year. I'd like to point out quickly uh, the immense amount of work that gets done by the Duraki family, Mel and Rock, uh, in, to pull this off, as well as uh, folks like Jason, Scotty, uh, Mark Weaver, and other members of the board, and all the special guests, uh, just a tremendous amount of effort, uh, not only in executing against the summer program, but all the, the planning associated with it beforehand. So thank you to those team members. Um, the second thing is, this is a really special event and uh, initiative that we're doing here. We're building this asset up in Alaska. Um, and originally it was constructed principally for our class. Um, and what we recognized over the past couple of years is 
it's too great of an asset to, to be just wasted on, on one group of people. And so what we've tried to do with uh, the inclusion of the class of 99, now with the 99 Legacy Fund, is bring in additional West Point classes and ecosystem to use this asset, this infrastructure, this facility for healing that we'll have up in Alaska shortly that we're building here. Uh, so the class of 99, uh, Haley and others who have joined us on our board and who are building out their, their fund and doing great things to support their classmates are going to have access to this facility. And we hope eventually to make it such that all post GWAC classes of West Point will be able to access it on, on very favorable terms as well uh, for not only to uh, enjoy in the, the fellowship as a classmate, but also to participate in the summer camp programs that will be running for for the children of our fall. So thank you all for joining. It's great to see you all. And I look forward to seeing many of you up in Alaska this summer. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Uh, Scotty, if you go to the next slide, sir. All right, I'd like to quickly recap all the things that we did last year. Now, many of you on the call were able to join us, but there are, are many also that were not able to join us. And uh, we, we had 72 volunteers from around the country um, that came in. Uh, here's a snapshot of the majority of the group from Construction Week, but then we also echoed the, a similar type of thing for Survivor Week. Uh, 72 volunteers, and we were able to build four cabins and prep the cabin for our Survivor Week project, which was to have our surviving families, our Gold Star families, build their own fifth cabin. We also did a lot of uh, yard work, landscaping, and, and other stuff, and then we built the gazebo um, in which we will follow on with additional gazebos this year. So um, if you've not seen the video that was referenced earlier by, by Scotty that Jess put together, uh, it kind of hallmarks what we did. And we, it was a lot of work. We, we did a lot of amazing things, but I will tell you that uh, the more people that come back that have done it and participate, we can get even more done. Not that I'm trying to squeeze more blood from a turnip, but what I am trying to do is, is capitalize on your skill sets because now you are all Duraki and Sons and employees, and, uh, and I'm going to put you to work. And I'm going to expect you to remember what you, what you had on, on board last, last summer. Uh, so with that said, that kind of wraps up uh, 2021. And so, Scotty, I'll turn it back over to you for 2022. Thanks, Rock. And the video that we referenced that Jess put together, uh, Weaver has put in the chat box. Uh, so you can link with that as soon as we get done here today. So... Kicking off 2022 Construction Week, uh, the leadership team, I'll be the chair. Um, for the past five years, uh, Rock's kind of led the whole thing. Um, and as we've continued to expand and continue to expand, finally Mel put her foot down and said, you need to back up a little bit. So for I'm taking over the, uh, the lead efforts on Construction Week, and we'll, we'll get to the other weeks in a second. But the team leads coming up tentative right now. Our plan to be George Woods, Mike Avey, Chris McQuillan, Anderson Puckett, Billy Gibbs, and Ann Bonney. Uh, some of those may change uh, as we as we look at other weeks that are coming up in the summer, but that's kind of uh, that'll feed into the the work parties that we talk about in a few minutes. So, John talked about all the other things that are going on. It's it, it makes no sense for us to buy a quarter million, half million dollars, put another million dollars into property. Um, so that we can honor our classmates one one week per summer. Um, it just doesn't doesn't make sense, right? So Rock's done a great job uh, working with other organizations. We have the Mazelton group coming up for two separate weeks this summer. Uh, they've committed, if, for those of you that have been up there, understand that we don't have all the amenities that we'd like to have on property right now. Uh, but the goal is to have a bathhouse up and operational uh, for this year's construction week. So the Mazelton group is going to come up in advance, a month in advance. So Rock can go out the other seven days of the week in between uh, their group and our project and tie up the loose ends. But the idea is that we would have a, a functional bathing facility besides a river on the Alaska, uh, Alaska compound. Then 9 through 16 July, we have the construction week, which is the focus of this presentation, obviously. Uh, the goal for us would be to build three to five cabins like we did last summer, uh, a gazebo, and then a side deck um, on the, the care, what we call the caretaker cabin or the main cabin. Um, in the parentheses on the right, I'd like to point out the first week is being uh, uh, 
the champion for that, the chair of that is Dan Webb, who's the class of 2010. Uh, not only the guy is an amazing human being and, and, and graduate, uh, his wife and, and son are amazing. And this is the week before he PCSs. So we think Mel is patient uh, with Rock. We have a, a class of 2010 officer that is willing to give up his week before he uh, finals out of Alaska to come and lead a project with us. That's the type of impact that we've had uh, on him. And it is leading the, the charge to bring a legacy fund under, under, the, under the group with uh, 2010. The week after we're done, uh, the Mazelton group is coming back. They're going to take the cabins that we build. They're going to trim them out, uh, do some additional landscaping. The leaders for that week, neither one of them can do the entire week, is Brad Pavlik, who's an ROTC grad uh, and came up last year. Uh, for those of you who were there, uh, you remember being both offended and laughing uh, at him for about seven days. Uh, along with Brian Watering, uh, I think I saw Kaylee on the call. Um, another amazing family, not graduates, uh, looking to give back and willing to take on leadership roles within the organization. Uh, after that, so we'll be trimming out the cabins, doing some work for the, the culmination, the, the reason that we do this, and that's Survivor Week, the 23rd through the 30th of July. Jason Costell is going to come up here. Uh, he works more at a kid's pace. So he's going to lead Survivor Week, um, an amazing event. Uh, we love having everybody come out for that. And then uh, you may not have heard of the Mazelton Group, but certainly you've heard of the Tra Travis Mannion Foundation. Uh, we've worked in agreement with them. They're going to come up. They're going to utilize the, the, the property, build a cabin and a fence. And Mark Weaver is going to be the champion for that week. In addition to that, uh, as a we always have some sort of a ceremonial act. Uh, each group is going to build a flagpole. And on the final day of construction, we'll be raising that as, as part of our closing ceremony for each week. So our intent for this week, uh, like I said, is the three to five cabins. They'll be very similar to the ones that you see uh, in the picture that we built last year. Uh, construction of the second gazebo, the side decks. Um, and then cohesion among the classmates, which was, um, I will say, a, a, an un it was not an intended consequence of our construction week last year. Um, but it was certainly one of the primary outcomes of it was the, the cohesion, the bonding, the healing that occurred during the construction, as well as uh, in the evenings by the bonfire and the bourbon. Um, the families that bonded, the multiple generations of uh, children, father, mother, grandfather uh, attending. Um, uh, tip of the hat to, to Brenda Donlin. Colin wasn't able to make it, but her and her sister brought their dad out. Uh, an amazing uh, event for that family as well. Um, and we'll continue to memorialize our fallen um, and, and, and honor them throughout the process. So for those of you who haven't been, uh, like we said, you know, this is the old, this Zoom is the only thing that doesn't start on time uh, in regards to Alaska. Uh, Sunday at 1600, um, we show up, uh, we have a big dinner and a, a, and a tour of the camp. Our goal this year, for those of you last year, we had dinner at the, the lodge. Our goal this year with the addition of the bathhouse uh, is to be able to feed everybody on property. Um, is that a no, Rock? I, I, I love the optimism. I'm, I'm with All you. Right. We, are, we are excited to, to try and do that. Absolutely. We're, we're looking at opportunities there. <laughs> um, but that, that's ultimately the goal for, for a lot of reasons. But uh, we'll have a dinner and then a fun camp tour. Monday's a work day, Tuesday's a work day, Wednesday's a work day, Thursday, uh, Kirk Alkire and Gold Star Peak, they host us up there, 99% uh, of us make it to the top, uh, we all made it down, uh, some with a little assistance, um, Jason, uh, but Gold Star Peak is 
an incredibly uh, emotional event for everybody that climbs up there. It is physically strenuous. Um, I know some people have been working out uh, in preparation uh, in preparation for it this next summer. Um, so we, we encourage you to uh, take that effort seriously. Uh, and it's not something that you want to miss out on. Um, I will tell you that six-year-old kids make it up to the top of the mountain. And uh, Kirk can probably tell you, I think a 90-year-old is the, or 80-something-year-old is the oldest to go up the top. So, Scotty, if I, it, Scotty, if I could, if I could for one second, I'd like to, uh, so from some vast feedback from last year, for those who remember the, the, the evening dinner after we hiked Gold Star became the coup de gras of events for the entire uh, week. Um, so we've moved, um, we've moved the band and some other things from Friday night to Thursday night. So we can try to repeat that. And we have commitment from uh, Dr. Emma Sager that he will be there for IVs again on Friday morning this year. Uh, for those that are participated, you know what I'm talking about. And we look, look forward to having you a part of that. I, I did not include any photos of the, uh, the IV line, but um, it was, it was significant and appreciated. Um, so that's a great update. Uh, we come down the mountain, clean up, have an amazing dinner, uh, and and really uh, kind of let your hair down uh, after three long days of work and one long day of hiking, um, and really and really uh, uh, have 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 a good time. Uh, Friday, uh, short day, you know, uh, we tie up some loose ends. Uh, and it's, then we have some fun. Uh, we do the polar bear plunge. Uh, the river runs at about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, once you get in, you acclimate to it pretty quickly and you'll, uh, you'll be sliding down the little, uh, slide that we have involved as well. Uh, it's refreshing. And for some of us, that's where you bathe every day anyway. So, uh, until we get the bathhouse built. Uh, and then we, so rock, we'll still have a farewell dinner on Friday night. Yes, we sure will. Yep. Okay. So farewell dinner and awards will be uh, occur on Friday night. This is our crew, our, our framing crew from last year. Our all licensed uh, heavy equipment operators. On the right, you see uh, on the ladder, uh, Brian Watring. He's, he's one of the leads for um, uh, the Mazelton uh, group. Uh, and then Cal Kroger, who's class of 2001, uh, came up last year. So as you can see, uh, we've got 99, you know, the legacy fund, we've got 2010 leading a week. We got class of 2001 coming up and working. Um, and then we've got, uh, locals from Alaska. Uh, we've got ROTC people, air force, Marines, everybody joining in and a medic. Um, oh, I guess we have the, oh, more slides. So the, the photo here, um, is the top of gold star peak. And then we have Jason coming down the mountain and rock doing something. So work parties, uh, as, as this has grown, We've started to understand uh, and, and differentiate different groups into and have leaders for each different team. Uh, George Woods has volunteered to be the, the materials team. Uh, if you remember him last year, pre-cutting everything um, and getting all the lumber. One of the big expenses that we have on the on the project is waste. Uh, so out of out of an effort to be more efficient and more uh, 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 efficient in time and efficient in uh, minimizing waste. We have one team that's responsible for cutting all the pieces. So then basically you get a kit delivered to your job site uh, to, 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 to assemble and build. And when you come up a two by four short, that means you did something wrong with the other two by four. Um, and then you have to go pay homage to, to George, apologize and they'll cut you another one. Um, we've got a foundation team. Uh, one of the more uh, comical events is we're trying to square up the foundations and they'll be square within a quarter of an inch. And somebody's like, it's a quarter of an inch. It's a cabin. It's eight feet by 16 feet. It's big. Don't worry about it. 
And then you say, okay, we're not going to worry about it. And then when we go to put the roof joists on and you're two inches out, uh, you explain to people, that's why we worry about the quarter of an inch down on the foundation. Um, so it's learning curve for everybody that hasn't built anything before. And you don't have to have built something before. Uh, the walls and roofing team, uh, each team, there become competitions between cabins, um, trying to get them up faster. Uh, definitely the most fun team. Uh, if, you, if you don't like heights, this is the team you want to be on. Um, getting up on the roof, putting some sheathing on, working with Dane. Um, and then you're going to get pulled because the, the, the walls and roofing team finished up and then you've got too many people. So you got to go start doing other, other tasks. Then we have the, uh, siding windows and doors team. Obviously they can't start at the beginning of the week because we haven't built the cabin yet. So they're going to be doing other work. Uh, and then once the, the, the cabin's walls start to go up, then they'll start putting siding and windows and doors in. Same thing with the painting, electrical, uh, and interior team. Um, you know, it's it's always the guy that puts the brown bomber together uh, and gets the the work turned in. That's uh, usually the hero of the team. This guy. Um, so you know, we we respect all of Rock's hard work on the engineering problem set and the engineering pro problem, but the guy that formats it and turns it in usually, you know. Is, is, is the closer. Uh, so that's painting and electrical, obviously. And that's what you see, right? So you need detail oriented people that are going to come in and not paint all over everything else. Um, so they'll be doing something else. That's a, a, an easy transition for the foundation team because all the foundations will be done. Then we got to go back and, and pick those things up. And I leave these in here uh, because if there's something that you really want to do or something you really don't want to do, when we do our survey and we start assigning teams, it makes it a little bit easier for us to, to, to do that. Uh, brief overview of the, the property. Um, yeah, we, we own uh, everything between the, the horseshoe, uh, the river area that's in gray, not in the green. Um, we've got five little green cabins that we built last year. The Memorial Pond is uh, primarily dug out because that's the uh, the source of all of our base uh, and foundations throughout the the, build, the sites. Um, and then we'll continue to do some uh, future lodge, the the main lodge um, foundations, which we're in a big fundraise for right now. Um, necessary skills. Those of you that were there last year. Uh, you understand, you know, if you haven't been building for five or 10 years, you are 100% accepted in this organization. Uh, these are things you, you don't, you require zero construction experience to come out there. Uh, if you don't know, somebody on that team will teach you. And I, I can tell you, uh, Bob, who is probably one of the, uh, best carpenters I've, I've ever met. Um, and who as, as, uh, Brenda's, Brenda's dad. Yeah. Um, uh, not Colin's dad, Brenda's dad, uh, who from my understanding is not an incredibly patient individual, uh, stopped and took the time to teach anybody and everybody that showed up on his job site how to measure the lumber, how to screw it. I mean, he might've been more, he's probably on first Sergeant Duraki's level of nitpicky um, above rock. Um, so you don't need the experience. Somebody's going to be there to teach you. Um, there, there's a, we, we all want to build buildings. We all want to build the camp, but from a developmental standpoint, um, having, Mothers and fathers teach kids how to run chop saws. Uh, having Bob teach people how to plumb up a wall. Um, you know, those are the things that we can't put, you, you can't put that in the slide. You can't show that in a picture. But once you've been there, uh, you understand it. When you see the bond between uh, seven kids that have just met each other 15 minutes before, all climb onto the same four wheeler and into the trailer and start driving around the camp. Um, like their best, like they've known each other for 10 years. 
Um, those are some of the things that we that we we can't put in a slide, but if, when you've been there, you you start to understand it. So logistics. Here's what the fund provides. We will provide you transportation to and from the Anchorage airport to the project site or wherever the, the main location is going to be. Um, in and around transportation. So we'll provide you transportation from the project site to Gold Star Peak, uh, dry cabin lodging. We now have five uh, operational cabins up at the, up at the facility. Um, we'll provide food, drinks, tools, materials, um, and some questionable supervision. Um, volunteer provided. If you your own transportation up to Alaska, uh, and then we have some optional upgrades, right? So there's we had 72 people that showed up last year. Um, some people rented their own cars. Some people rented their own cars, and then you know basically provided them to the team for the greater part of the week when they weren't using them. Uh, some people rented Airbnbs. Some people stayed in hotels. Um, we're working on building a Ritz Carlton. So Bill Song will come back up. Um, and then if you want hot showers, you know, that's, that becomes your option. Right. Um, but I'd like, uh, Billy Gibbs to talk a little bit about what his experience was, um, because he stayed off property with his daughter. Uh, sure. Um, I did stay off property and just a, a warning given the situation we're in with supply chain, rental cars, Airbnbs, all that stuff. I will have mine booked by the end of this month, just so you know. Um, just wise plan ahead. Don't try to do it in May or June because it probably won't happen. And Palmer does have a number in the surrounding area. It has a number of Airbnbs. Um, I want to say the AV family stayed in one. I know we stayed in a couple. Me and uh, my daughter and a good friend of mine and his daughter that came up. Uh, and then you'll, you'll notice that everybody will pitch in. People are hopping rides left and right. We just need accountability like normal, just to make sure we don't leave anybody behind. Um, and it's not overly expensive. Uh, it's, it's not as expensive or as nice as Bill Song needs. So, um, you know, he drowns his sorrow with really good bourbon up there. Uh, but there are plenty of places to stay. Uh, they're all Alaska style. So that means just a little rough around the edges, except for the Drocky house. If you get invited, I'd go and see the I see Mel's cabin out back of the Drocky house. If you, if you get a chance, it's quite the, uh, the site. Um, but all joking aside, there is plenty to do there as far as places to stay. Uh, talked to the Crispino family about hot showers at a gas station. So I know that was an event at one point. So there's plenty of running water in the state of Alaska. That's clean. Some of it's hot. Some of it's not. Uh, but if you need any tips or where we stayed, um, call, email, get in touch with somebody who's got my contact info and I'll, I'll let you know more on that. Paul Hollenack, if you want to jump in and tell a little bit of your, your experience staying on property. Yeah, so you can see in the in the video, my wife Elizabeth is behind me. We're all and uh Benjamin, there he is. You guys remember Ben from last year. Hey Ben! So last year, What's up, Ben? <laughs> so uh Ben and I came up, not I and to be honest, you know, I knew it'd be a great experience. I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, and we stayed on property. Um, and so we stayed in the in the three little pigs cabin as cabins as we like to call them. So there's three little cabins out in the woods. Me, Ben, and John Hawbaker. Um, it was a little bit of one person. We were uh, sharing a vehicle with Chris and Amity Fedoropoulos, um, which became quite the stories. I won't bore you with right now, um, but they know. And uh, and quite and frankly, it went quite well because we were we were on property. Uh, with everybody who was staying in campers, um, you know, the Durakis, the Delarosas, um, the Aim Siggers, and, you know, we, we had our own kind of site where we had bonfires and night swims in the river, and uh, it, it was a great time. And so even though we didn't have running water um, on site, per se, we, you know, we had access to the lodge where we could get a shower if we needed to or we just did the Duraki bath in the river. Um, and we had, we had quite the great time. And so for those of you thinking to bring kids up, you know, I, I thought it would be an experience for Ben. Um, it was, it was amazing. You know, I think he was one of those kids who's off riding seven people on an ATV at a time. 
And uh, we still in this house um, bore his brothers with stories of trying to get up the mountain um, and the score stories of Scotty and Kyle and uh, Costal and everybody coaching him up the mountain and the, the aftermath of all of that. So Scotty, don't worry. I've warned my wife about you already. And uh, so, and so in fact, we're, we're bringing the, uh, the whole family, all three of my sons and my wife this summer, we're going to do a week of vacation and then come to work week and uh, excited to stay on property and, uh, and meet everybody and have a good time. And, uh, and for those of you who are new to this experience, uh, Miss Linda is the best. Um, and the Watchings, uh, you know, Kaylee, uh, those, yeah, you know, everybody. And uh, the Dawn, as Ben refers to her, um, you know, the, that whole support crew is amazing. And we, we had an amazing time and looking forward to doing it again. This yeah. Summer. Hey, the <laughs> yeah, two dozen, two dozen roses, buddy. Two dozen roses. <laughs> so, so uh, Paul, Paul, I just want to say thanks for for saying that because I think there's a lot of folks that were a little nervous as to what would happen and how it went, but uh, your feedback uh, really rings home. You know, Billy Gibbs, thanks for your kind words. Um, and, you know, for those that don't know, uh, uh, Ben wrote his college essay about his experience in Alaska last year. And um, uh, much like Jess, Jess Savage's video, uh, reading that reading that uh, that essay will bring tears to your eyes. So, Paul, we're looking forward to having your whole family back this time, and I hope that I can keep the crazy up for everyone. I don't disappoint. Absolutely, and just so you know, he did get in. He's going to UNC Charlotte next fall, so we're, we're in. So, Ben, good job on uh, editing the language that we've used coming down the mountain. Um, so Donnie, what, just real quick, while we're on the topic, just for the group, uh, if you remember Mr. Kean Skinner, um, he was uh, one of our local Alaska volunteers. Uh, he has received nomination from all three of the Alaska CODELs for the Air Force Academy. And I actually submitted his um, his reference letter, uh, his letter of, uh, of recommendation to the Air Force Academy yesterday. So we're hoping that he is a future Air Force cadet when, uh, when you all show up this summer. But uh, Ben, uh, congratulations, brother. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, Paul, you brought up a comment about the people in RVs. Uh, so if you're, I mean, if you're gung ho, uh, not an RV, but tents, tents are options. We have tent pads. Uh, Rock will build you a tent pad. Um, RVs are an option. We, we, some Rock stayed in a trailer, right? Like not an RV, not an RV, like a snowmobile trailer. Um, so, all on property. Uh, there's a lot of different options up there, uh, depending on what your level of uh, adventure is and your tolerance for um, cold cold baths. So, as Paul said, arrive early or stay late. There's a lot of things to do. That picture is me in 2004 fishing in Alaska. Um, there's hiking, glacier cruises, flight scene, uh, go hike on a glacier. Um, Fly in fishing, uh, go see Denali uh, or Mount McKinley, as as many of you wouldn't know it. Um, so much there. Uh, drive through Denali, go see moose. Um, we had deer go through our camp last year. Um, in the middle of the construction, we had a family of deer go through the middle of the camp. Um, Scotty, I think you mean moose, sir. Moose. We had moose. Was it moose that went through? Yes, moose. <laughs> All right, moose, moose, deer. What they got? Really, so Bullwinkle deer. might show up. Uh, we make enough noise uh, that the bear stay away, um, but we we make sure that there's bear protection there as well. Um, so if, if you're if you're interested in bringing your family up uh, and you have the time, um, I encourage you to. Save the money and stay on property so that you can spend the money and go explore the rest of Alaska uh, because there's so so much to do. Um, it, honestly, a, a week doesn't cut it, but it'll give you a taste and, and give you a reason to come back um, for years and years and years to come. A couple of small things. If anyone would like assistance with planning, uh, Mel, Linda, and I would be happy to help you plan, give you recommendations, advice, uh, things to do, don't do. 
Uh, and then also, I don't know if she's still on. She was earlier, but Ann Bonnie was looking at doing a fly out fishing trip before or after construction week. And uh, we'd love to have some classmates join her. If you're interested, um, we can certainly put you in touch with her later on. But uh, thanks, Scotty. Um, one thing I didn't bring up. So uh, evening next, we have people covering food. Um, based on the cheers that we did earlier, I think we need to nominate Kelly Keller for the mixologist. Uh, the martini that she presented, uh, I think, had three olives in it. So uh, pretty good for a Thursday night. Uh, following this, we'll be sending out a survey, uh, much like we saw last year. Um, what's the probability that you're going to show up, the date you can commit by? Uh, the number of people in the group and, you know, are you going to be bringing kids or not? Because that helps us break up our teams. Um, you know, if you have a desired uh, work party, if you, and understand not everything is about the, the construction, right? So we need people to cook and cooking is a full time engagement. Um, so if that's, if that's something that you're excited about or uh, you want to help out with, we certainly need people making breakfast. Uh, so, you know, breakfast is, you know, we, we have a hot breakfast every morning. We have lunches that are, you, you make your own lunch while you're at breakfast, bring your sandwiches out. Um, and then we, we have a hot dinner every night. Um, sleeping accommodations, what, you know, what your desired accommodations are, because we've now got five cabins on site. We're going to be able to fill those, um, RVs, tents, others, um, and then email us. I'll be giving you, uh, I've got somebody that's going to help put together the, all the survey data. So I'll, I'll publish out that email address um, and then copy us, uh, Rock and I on it. And we will make sure everything uh, gets planned out the way we want to do it. If there's another week that you want to participate in, um, let us know. Because I think we, we could always use help, right, Rock? We could always use what we, we've got that the, those other weeks, the Mazel Tan group, uh, Survivor Week, uh, and the Travis Mannion Foundation. We don't have as much of a need for those weeks, but if it works with your schedule, I mean, obviously, a lot of us want to be there because of the, the class bonding um, and the excitement that sur surrounds Construction Week. But if you can't make it that week and you still want to come up and participate, we've got four or five other weeks where we can certainly use your help. Uh, and you'll still get so much of the experience. Um, so if that works for you, let us know about that as well. I, I, Scotty, I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, if, if that week doesn't work, we can get you in somewhere else. If you're going to just come to Alaska, I mean, I, I will put you to work and I don't mean that funny, but I, there's things to do all summer long. I mean, we are out there every weekend getting things done. You know, we have lots of local support, um, that, that helps out, but we can always use more. The other thing is, is that if you uh, if you want to, we don't have all of our, our Gold Star families, our Survivor families locked in yet for either 98 or 99 or, or even uh, class of 10. <clears throat> but if you want to be involved, you know, that is the other week that is a really uh, moving, emotional and successful week. It's, it's therapeutic for the surviving families, but it's also therapeutic for you uh, as a donor and mentor. So thanks for bringing that up, Scotty. Rock and Scotty, real quick, if I could step in. This is Doc. If I could step in for a second, I want to caveat on a couple of things that Scotty was talking about. If you're planning on coming up early or staying late to, to recreate and hang out in Alaska for a little bit and you want to do some hiking, but you don't want to pack equipment, get in touch with Rock or Scotty. Make sure that uh, that gets to me. Remedy Alpine stands prepared to outfit you with uh, backpacks, camp stoves, uh, sleeping bags, tents, anything you need to enjoy your time up in Alaska. And then if you're going to stay on site and you need some additional support with with that, with uh, camp stoves or uh, sleeping bags or that stuff that you don't want to pack uh, to bring up, again, consolidate that information through the 98 Fund and Remedy Alpine. I'll make sure that you're taken care of when you get up here. Thank you. So that, wow. That's, Thank you, that's Doc. huge for anybody coming up. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, so with that, uh, aside from two tasks, uh, uh, watch the video. If you haven't seen it, if you have seen it, watch it again. It's in the, it's in the chat box. Uh, we've updated our website, uh, as well as our donation link. So you are welcome to 
go in and contribute at any time. Um, did I, does that check the box, John? Ask him for money. All right. Thanks. Um, so uh, we, we, we need all the help that we can get. Um, but there, there's nothing that, that compares and, and we're, we look forward to more than having everybody up again this summer um, and, and bonding and building uh, and, and coming home, coming home safe in one piece. Might be broken, but one piece. Does anybody open it to the floor? Does anybody have any questions? I don't know if we do hand raises or like on the little mag majigger or chat box. Yeah, I was going to say, Scotty, if we have people just jump on chat, I'll just, we'll just keep it a little bit more organized. Uh, I'll, we'll call you up and, um, and while people are hopefully typing, uh, just, you know, all you do is just give your name. And then, uh, okay, so uh, uh, Tracy, go ahead and go ahead and uh, you're the first one to jump in. So go ahead and come off mute and ask uh, what you want to ask. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to ask Scotty and Mark um, to explain to the group sort of how much savings we provide by building all the infrastructure ourselves. Yeah, you know, that's a good, thanks, Tracy, for, for saying that. So, yeah, so. Uh, you know, at the cost of about uh, $15,000 of materials for these cabins, we are producing what would otherwise cost about sixty dollars or $70,000 to have built. Uh, you know, the foundation that's done before you even get there for people that are here last year, you know, that's donated, right? I have folks that come in with equipment and compact, turn dirt. We move the good equipment. Anyways, all of this stuff that we're doing um, it, it is cutting the cost down so that we don't have... Um, we don't have all these costs. So what you're doing is literally cutting the cost in a third. Um, and Scotty, I'm seeing your inbox. If you're meaning to do that, that's, that's awesome. I just want to make sure you oh. do that. No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks Tracy for bringing that up. Uh, so effectively, you know, we have saved something like $400,000 worth of worth of cost to the, to the group because we've done it in house. Um, If you've not seen the picture that Brenda Donlin posted uh, in the chat, you can scroll back up. She has a picture of uh, of Chris, uh, Chris getting his IV shot last year. So, Brenda, thanks for doing that. I appreciate it. Uh, and then I also want to say something. I didn't see him on earlier. And I apologize. But uh, Scotty mentioned Cal Kroger. Calvin uh, is a class of 01. I think he's a 2000 year group guy. He's a fancy, high, fast tracking BZ type guy. Uh, but for those that may not know, he was Dennis Pintor's XO in Iraq when Dennis was killed. And so, Cal, it is awesome to see your name on here again, as always. And also, it looks like you'll be coming out again this summer. And we love the fact that you're doing that. And on behalf of the entire Pintor family, thanks yeah. for, for staying with us, brother. Absolutely. Sappers forward. Okay, Scotty, I'm not seeing anyone else in chat so far, but uh, uh, if there's any other questions, I guess we can just hey, feel free. Hey, Rock. Yep, go ahead. Hey, Rock, I'm going to just interrupt you. Can you or John talk about, and I'll, I'll uh, me and Bill Song are kind of point for fundraising. Can you talk to, the dollars are not just going to build a cabin. They're going to obviously support everything, but also what this can turn into as far as John, I think, used the word asset and how we will eventually make this a self-sustaining thing. So. Most nonprofits, you give a dollar, they do something, they need more dollars to keep doing it. Can you all elaborate on that? Yeah, let, let me start and then I'll turn it over to John. Um, so, so listen, so what we're building is a retreat that in a few year, years will be worthy of us, not only just Airbnb and being the individual cabins out. And, you know, if you if you ask the Crispinos, they stayed in a dry cabin. Alaska is famous for dry cabins because it's so cold in the winter. Uh, it's so expensive to heat. So you have dry cabins. So. Uh, we will rent out uh, the individual cabins. That revenue will come right back to run the site. And then once we get the lodge built, we will rent that out for corporate events, for other veteran groups. Uh, I have had three requests already uh, to use the property. The problem is the request came in the same weeks we'll be doing construction in the summer. So as soon as we get things buttoned up and the landscaping done, uh, this project will start paying for itself so that then we can host more and more families every summer. So Billy, it's a great point and thank you for asking. Uh, John Serafini, I'm sure I missed something, so let me turn it over to you, sir. Well, as Billy points out, the, the intention here is to build a facility that uh, is uh, 
is not just for the class of 98, but will ultimately be for scores of, of West Point classes um, and lots of different people using them. And the only way for us to do that is uh, to access as many different donor pools as possible. You know, we've been uh, thriving, uh, but predominantly off of the class of 1998 as our principal benefactors. And we've recognized in the past few years that for us to scale as an organization, we just have to get access to a very uh, different source of, of donors. So engaging with lots of different other West Point classes, bringing them into the fold allows us to uh, hopefully raise more money from them to build this infrastructure, the, the, the lodge, the cabins, the gazebo, all the appropriate uh, power and, and water, et cetera, infrastructure necessary to build the facility. And once it's up, as Rock points out, this then becomes a self-sustaining facility that uh, can operate on its own two feet as a, as a profitable thing, still under the, under the confines of our nonprofit, uh, and we'll throw off cash that we can then deploy into other ways to help our class and other West Point classes. So Billy, thanks for bringing it up. And John, thanks for the uh, for the summary. Great, great job. Uh, a few things in chat, if you're not monitoring chat. Uh, uh, Aaron Sapre um, has uh, a photo album from last year. Um, so Aaron uh, basically has just offered up an opportunity to want to contact her via Facebook Messenger. She will invite you to that group so you can see all the pictures. So Aaron, thanks for doing that. Uh, for those that don't know, Aaron also um, made our, handmade our poppy our uh, poppy buttons last year for that we handed it out. And then Aaron, help me out. Are you, uh, we were looking at doing 98 fun mugs that you were going to make either for sale or for, uh, for this summer. I'm not, not putting you on the spot, but uh, I know we talked about it last year. Um, okay. Uh, Aaron, so Aaron said, yes, she's making cups for us and they're in the drying rack now. So thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Um, Brenda Donnellan asked uh, Scotty if we could post not only the, the Facebook event, uh, but the slides and our our thing. Mark Weaver, you want to talk about what's being shared after this so folks can come back and look or share with their friends? Yeah, Mark, I think that's a, a great comment. Um, and it, it leads me to, I've seen a flurry of posts and emails and texts about not from, well, from classmates, but I want to bring a friend or my friend heard about this. Billy brought his friend last year. So it's going beyond the, the, the small circle community to here's the value, support the fund, but as a, as a family, as a friend, as a, as a, an American, um, go take the opportunity to come up uh, and experience it because you, we, when you, when you attend survivor week or even construction week, you think you're, you think you're giving, but when you walk away from the end of the week, you realize you walk away with a lot, you, you take a lot more than you gave. Every single time I go up there, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to go spend a week building and I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do that. And I walk away and I'm like, wow, I got a lot more than I gave this year, every single year. That's a, that's a great testament, Scotty, and thanks for saying that. Uh, I, I would say also we have, we, have the, we have some things to do between now and the summer that we could use some help with, right? We have uh, T-shirts that need to be ordered and, and prepared and final designed. We have stickers that need to be done. We have uh, water bottles. You know, we're going to try to up the game this year and, and kind of give or do, provide better maybe less stuff, but better quality stuff so that you can use it for advertising down the road. Uh, so if you want to be involved with that type of stuff, you can donate time uh, to us to help. 
You can share, you can share the story that what we're doing and how we're doing it, but you can also share the videos that Jess made for us. Those are obviously some, some pretty testimonial type things. You can tell your story. If you were here last year, you can, you, you can um, share that and what it meant, you know, to hear uh, at our fundraiser for army Navy. I heard uh, Brenda told me that her father said that he's going to come to Alaska every year until he dies. That's how much it moved him. Now that's, that's our classmates, wives, father, right? I mean, that's, that's pretty far removed, you know, but there's linkage, right? And so once you get one linkage, it's amazing. You know, I, I am now friends with Billy Gibbs's daughter as if she's my niece, because I, I'd never met her before a day in my life. And, and now she spent a week in Alaska and I have a new niece forever. Um, so I share these things with you that uh, you will not be disappointed. Uh, I promise you. And a lot of new names on here. We'd love to see you. If, but if the one week doesn't work out, there's ways for us to help you. Um, you know, watching the Crispino family up here as a whole. Uh, John Chicarello brought one of his three daughters up. And that was an amazing experience to watch happen. Uh, you know, bonfire time with John Hawbaker and just, you know, experiencing some discussion about PTSD and challenges that we have together and things that, uh, you know, John and I never served together, but something new. Um, and, and, and then there's just the endless support of all the nonprofits that are up here with us. You know, you heard Doc earlier, you had Kirk Alkire. Uh, and so I guess now, Scotty, I'd like to, if there's no more questions, um, I, I would, uh, I would offer up anyone who wants to give a testimonial or talk about their experience or, or, uh, or maybe talk to others that don't know what to, um, to do. And Doc, I'm with you. We're doing some more podcasts. I, I know it's not for the group, but, uh, we're up. We're on it and we'll have it when you're up here with a whole group. So Scotty, uh, I guess we could, any testimonials or anything, if you want to say, you, you heard, you heard Paul and you heard Billy earlier, but uh, anyone um, else wants to speak? As people think about testimonials, I, I do want people to kind of appreciate the scale of, of, of what the 98 funds doing. And it's all kind of been on the back of us, right? Um, we've raised $850,000, $900,000. People like Billy have given $100,000. People like uh, Jason have given $50,000. Um, there's been maybe 10 of our classmates who've given kind of that level. Um, you know, uh, Callie and Anderson are giving $750 a month. We've got 60,000 of recurring donations. Um, this effort in Alaska is a multi-million dollar project. It's gonna happen really quickly because Rock is up there and making shit happen. Um, and so, um, you know, we have big, big um, uh, funds we need to, to, you know, make impact here. And, and ultimately, I'm hopeful. And the reason I give is, is we're going to help hundreds of uh, veterans families uh, in the future. And so I know we when we were um, when, when most of us were junior officers, you know, we started giving 1998. It was a good number, sentimental value. But. There are people giving a lot more, $100 a month, $200 a month. If you're on this call and you're not giving at least $20 a month, you, you should. That goes a long way. And then, look, we need, we need big checks. Um, and I can tell you, from my experience, I've been given and I've had to force myself to give over the last 10, 15 years. You get a lot back and you're going to make a lot more. I'm not a religious guy, but... Once I started giving, I started to earn a lot more. It just, I, I will tell you, you should open up your heart and, and think about giving. I know it's painful, um, but uh, it's, you, you'll get a lot out of it. So that, that was my kind of fundraising pitch. And if you want to talk about giving more or doing more from a financial commitment, you know, reach out to me, John, um, Billy, and, and we can kind of walk you through, you know, how we do it. Thanks, Bill. And I would say someone, someone had in the chat, but uh we have had tremendous success with employer uh, matching funds for charitable do donations. That has been a huge change for us in the last two years. So please, if your employer does that, we'd love to have you uh, reach out. We can provide whatever information you need um, to, uh, to, to make that happen. The other small thing, every little bit helps uh, is Amazon smile, right? I mean, uh, uh, you know, we all shop on Amazon, so take advantage of it. And uh, it is the West Point class of 1998 Memorial is what our official name is on Amazon. So put us on Amazon Smiles and, and bring in the money. Um, okay. If anybody, uh, go ahead, go ahead, if, if there's anybody that uh, was on the fence about going or has questions, um, 
and you want to ask you know, somebody that went last year that's not uh, brainwashed, uh, you know, live in the fun, live in the dream. Um, you know, if you, you want to bring your family up, uh, we can put you in contact with um, uh, the Puckets. Uh, they've seen my, my, my mentorship of the children and, and the guidance that I give them. Uh, you're in Alaska, figure it out. Um, but, but they, they, they can talk you through the ins and outs of what it's like to bring kids, uh, what kids are appropriate. Um, all kids are appropriate. That's my answer. Uh, maybe not. No, we, we, we've had two year olds on the site, one year olds on the site. So if they're walking, they're good. Um, so that we, we can put you in contact with somebody else that can answer the questions that you, that you, that you want to ask. Um, we had, a uh, Paul, you raised your hand. Yeah. I just want to make the pitch about kids and, and I'll tell you, you know, when this came up, um, last year, like it, it was, I, it was something I wanted to do and take Ben, Ben's, Ben's a middle kid. So he kind of gets left out of a lot of things and, and so I thought it was something he and I could do, but I, I'll tell you, I, I can't describe the impact of just being around good people, right? And just being around good kids. And we, he and Ben and I both spent a lot of time around Logan Lovett, who is a gold star kid, who is the son of a soldier that served for rock. Um, you know, and we spent some time with AJ and, and I know the impact it had on me and just trying to talk about it now, I, I'm sure the impact it had on Ben, but just being around this group of men and, and their families and our classmates, men and women and their, and their families. And from every, I mean, even from Dawn and Linda and Kaylee and the impact that had of people out to do something bigger than themselves. And, and you know, maybe we just don't do enough of that, um, but don't underestimate you know, don't think your kids are too young to come and see that interaction and see that camaraderie um, and what what we get out of it, what they can get out of it. So don't don't think your kids are too young to have a, a positive experience out there. Um, it may be more work if they're younger. Certainly, they may not you know be able to spend eight hours on the work site. Um, it may have to be a little different than that. But um, you know, the chance to get out and just be in Alaska. Um, you know, we kind of called it no rules, Alaska, right? You get out on the ATVs, you have some fun, you stay up all night. And my wife's kind of, you can probably see her frowning at me over my shoulder right now, but you know, there, there's something to be said for having that kind of experience. So, you know, if you got any questions, I'm happy if anybody wants to reach out and talk about it more after this. Paul, you, you, you bring up a great comment about younger kids and, you know, having the, the 12, 12 hour workday ethic. Um, it, it would be phenomenal. And we talked about it last year, but having somebody be kind of the lead for kids stuff afternoon, right? So the kids come, they eat breakfast, they go to the work site, they work from nine to noon, they eat lunch and then have some, some mentors go do things with the kids, fun things, right? Uh, that keeps them entertained. It keeps them safe. Uh, so if anybody wants to volunteer to be the, the, the kid champion, uh, you know, if, even if it's just for a day, um, we can, we can set up activities to, to make sure that they're having the, the best time of their life as well. Okay. So I've had a couple things come in on the, on the chat that I'd like to cover real quick. So absolutely. Chris and Amity. Uh, yes. Dawn has said she's about 90% sure that she can be there for food for us. Uh, we already have Linda who, who is committed for this year. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, so it's going to be very similar to last year. And I, and I, I think if I know Don, um, she, she's going to pull out every stop to make sure she, she was so moved. And for those that don't know, her husband was on the job site with us all, all week long too. Uh, Brenda just wanted to point out that, um, it is, it, it, I mean, the days are pretty easy. I mean, they're pretty chill, not a lot of work. We kind of hang out, eat bonbons, drink water. Um, I mean, really that's all we do, right, Brenda? If you want to jump on, feel free to verbally accost me with my, 11 hour work day, but, uh, yes. Um, and then for John Stillwell and the, and the nine, nine legacy fund. Uh, yes. So what it has kind of broken down to is the week after 4th of July is kind of the general time we do our construction week. And then we do our, our big survivor week, um, the last week of July. So a week between construction week, a week, a week to recover, and then a week for, for survivor week, if that helps you out, John. 
Um, however, once we get the construction done, we're hoping to have more survivor events spread out over the whole summer so we can get uh, a, a, a whole breadth of people from around the country. Um, and then Kaylee Watering has said she's volunteering to run all of our kids stuff for us, Scotty. So uh, she's she's on, on board for there. I think that's what she means. If not, I just volunteered her. Perfect. And then um, sounds like you guys need a pediatrician. Yes, Brian, we do. <laughs> we do need a pediatrician. D does the pediatrician bring Pedialyte and IV bags? All right. Uh, that's what we're hoping for. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Rock. If, Sir, uh, Chris really? Nanny, if Chris and Amity are up for it, if anybody comes, they'll get happy balls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just saying. Yeah, yeah the, the donation of happy balls was, was a nice surprise. And for those that haven't downloaded it yet, there's a great picture of Damon De La Rosa and his son uh, just off the peak of Gold Star Peak uh, during the hike. So, Kirk, thanks for sharing that. Uh, neat picture. Uh, something that I'm sure, uh, I don't know if Damon even has a copy of that, but I will share with him. Um, that's an awesome picture, Kirk. And that's what you're seeing for, for visibility when you're on uh, Gold Star Peak, if you have not been up there. Yeah. And, and Brock, just a caveat on that. We were talking about kids and, uh, and, and, and bonding or whatever. I captured that shot and boy, it was, it, it got me in the feels, uh, just watching the two of them sit out there on that cliff, uh, on that edge. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that brings up a good point. I mean, Damon's youngest son is, uh, seven or eight. Uh, so he, he made the hike no problem. And I think, you know, Scotty, Scotty's son Maddox made the hike when he was five, maybe. So a lot, lot of flexibility here. All right. And Chris and Amity, thank you for bringing your balls to Alaska. We love them. All right, Scotty, I, uh, I don't see any other questions, sir. Uh, with that, I thank everybody for attending. Look, uh, continue to follow the Facebook uh, link or the Facebook page. Uh, we'll get the survey out. Shoot the email. Make sure you copy Russ, uh, Russ Via, in the, in the email. She'll be assembling all the information for us. Um, and uh, we look forward to, to seeing everybody this summer. And Scotty, if, uh, if you and I can hang on here, if anyone wants to ask us private questions as the group drops away, uh, I'll be happy to stay on for a little bit. Uh, it, it, I'm not sure if you can, Scotty, but uh, if we can just stay a little bit and just see if anyone has any questions that they, they were didn't want to ask the group. But uh, I cannot thank you enough for joining us and uh, look forward to another amazing summer event.